Hi everyone, in this video we're going to cover assembling your found letter photographs together to create your word in Canva. So first thing is either on your iPad or on your laptop, you're going to go to class link. So go to the student portal page, click on class link, sign in, and then click on the Canva app. From there, you're going to be all set. Um, this should be the screen that you see. You're going to click custom size. This is in pixels right now. We're just going to change it by clicking the drop down and going to inches. And we want our canvas to be longer than it is taller, just so it can fit your word. So we're going to start with 10 by 5. If you have a smaller word, this will probably fit yours. If you have somewhat of a bigger word, we can always go in and make this canvas longer. But first step is to go over here to where it says uploads on the left hand side. Click on it and get your photos uploaded. So you just need to click upload files on your computer. That'll take you to your, of course, documents. And you can go find your photo one folder and where you save them. If you're on the iPad, once you click this, it will tell you that you can go to the photo library on the iPad and just add all the photos that are yours. So just by clicking them, they appear over here in the canvas. I'm just going to get my word laid out. Uh, I'm doing create for mine. And from here, I'm going to take my time and edit my photos to get them how they want. So like my C right here would be good because it's filling the frame. I can easily tell it's a C. My R, right, is upside down right now. So by clicking on it, the rotate option comes up. I'm just going to rotate it so it's going the right way. And by using the diagonals, or the corners rather, I can go in and adjust the size. I actually might make them just a little bit bigger. One thing you want to remember is not to use the sides here to make an image bigger because it will kind of distort your letter. So always use the corners. For this one, right, I want to go in and crop because it's supposed to be an E. And while I can see there's an E here, I have a lot of distractions going on. So the viewer might not be able to tell. So clicking on that. I can go to edit photo and crop is up here. It gives me the whites in the corners and I can drag it to make my letter really become the focal point, fill the frame and eliminate all of those distractions. Once I have it, I can just go click off and it'll save. So what I'm trying to do right now is just make them the same height. This might work for your letters, it might not. You might have a few that are longer than others. You get to decide. Um, how you want them to be, but you want to think about having them really organized and fitting this canvas space in a nice way, a way that's like visually pleasing. So this step might take some time, but you want to make sure that you do it. All right, this is supposed to be an E, so I'm going to rotate it. And some of your letters might look better mirrored, or you might need to mirror them to get the letter. So clicking on it, I can hit flip, and it will give me the letter. So from here, I can pretty much tell right now that it's not really going to fit on this canvas size, that I'm going to need to make it a little bit bigger. All I'm going to do is making sure I'm clicked on this canvas, hit resize, and go to custom size. And remember, I just want to make it longer, so I actually might double this. You can go in and change this as many times as you need. You just hit continue and then resize this design. It might take a second, but then it will appear. So I'm going to take my time, get these all set up. And now I think I have a little bit too much space and I can make the letters bigger, but I can easily do that right now just by clicking and dragging so I select all the letters. Um, I can also do this by clicking on one, holding down shift, and then clicking the others. If you're on the iPad, you can do this by clicking on one of the letters to start, 
hitting the three dots and then going to the option that says select multiple and then selecting, of course, multiple of them. But now I can kind of change all of my letters at the same time, now that they're at the same starting place. So I'm going to make mine maybe just a little bit bigger so they fill the space more. And I'm thinking, how are they going to be nice and evenly aligned? One thing is I want them right in the middle of this right here. So selecting all of them, Canva is really smart. I can go up to this where it says position and align elements and just hit middle. And I was already pretty close, it says, but what that does is it just shifts them so they're in the middle. You can also do this kind of manually by grabbing them and Canva will let you know, right, when they're there. Another thing to think about is the spaces in between them. Right now, I've got really big spaces here and smaller ones here. It's a little bit distracting to the eye, not as visually pleasing. So I want them to be all equal. I could, of course, take the time and go and move them all. Or once again, I can select all of them, go to position. And then where it says space evenly, as long as I just go tidy up, it will find kind of the average in between them. So looking at it now, right, I'm almost there. I've got a little bit more space over here than I do over here. It's a quick fix. I'm going to take them, drag them, let Canva give me the guides. And that looks better. So now I have them. They fit in the space. Of course, if you wanted, you could have them right up next to each other. You don't have to make them evenly spaced if you don't want to. But now I have a really solid, you know, image here. I could make some other choices, such as going in and editing my photos to be black and white. So I just need to click on, hit edit photo, go to adjustments, scroll down and where it says saturation, if you just drop that all the way over to the left, it will turn your photo black and white. I could decide to go and do that for all of them, or I could leave them, you know, so that they were as they were originally taken. Another thing you could think about um, especially if you turn all your photos black and white, is maybe changing this background color. I wouldn't go for anything too crazy, you know, like a vibrant neon green or anything, but keep it neutral, so either black or white. You can see up here, I changed all of my letters to black and white, and I decided I wanted to try and see what it would look like with the black, so I just have to go here and select it. Main, like most important thing is that you can still tell all of your letters and that the background's not too distracting. If I decide against it, I can just use the undo, whoops, and go back and change that up. So once I have my image how I want it, I'm going to go make sure that I went up here and titled it and then hit share, go to download, switch this over to JPEG and then select download. So all this is doing is it's downloading it, of course, to my downloads file on my laptop, but on the iPad, it's going to go to the files app on there. So if you go to the home for the iPad and search up the files, it'll be there. Regardless of if you use your iPad or your laptop, you wanna make sure you find the file and go ahead and save it to your OneDrive just like we've done before.